three, two, one. Welcome to the 4th Line Podcast, part of Full Press Radio. This is March the 8th, 2021. With you today is myself, Carl, and Stephen Nick. I thought you were going to go the whole name like Stephen Nicholas. <laughs> I thought about it, but you know what? Let's keep it a little formal. Yeah, that would have been weird. Yeah. Happy Monday, Carl. Happy Monday to you. Uh, and it's a special Monday. It is a special Monday. It's International Women's Day today. When, so when you, I mean, you, you woke up this morning, it was International Women's Day. And I, I'm sure, I mean, all the time, there's always like super important women that you think of. Well, where did your mind go today? Um, well, I live with two <laughs> women, <laughs> one girl and one woman. So my wife and my daughter, and we called my mom this morning and FaceTimed with her a little bit, you know. Those are those are probably the three people uh, uh, for me who I made sure to spend a little time with today. Absolutely, and that's great. Glad glad you were able to find some time for that. I think of, I mean, I also think of my wife, think of my mom, think of my sister, um, but also like all the women out there that um, I mean, as as a hockey show and thinking about the world of hockey is uh, the moms as you know bringing kids to the rink making sure that that happens, right? That impact that they have. And not just like bring kids to the rink, but like, I mean, I I know uh, mother-in-law like ran the league. And so, you know, those super impactful women in that side, but then also thinking of all the great professional and, and amateur women hockey players out there and and what they're doing to make it a better spot for women in hockey. Absolutely. Thinking of all of them today. So happy International Women's Day, especially if you're listening and are a woman. So uh, lots of great stuff this week. We've got uh, a coaching change again this week. It feels like that's the the thing we talk about. The dominoes are starting to fall. So let's start, let's start right there. Last week, we sat here and talk was it just last week that the habs fired yeah Clutch? okay so last week we sat here and talked about the habs and now after winning a game seven to one that was not enough for the flames jeff ward out daryl sutter back in back in Is there, are there no other coaches for these teams to go find <laughs> like what is with this rotating door? But Daryl, Su- okay. So here's the thing, Carl. There's like Sutter brothers, right? There's a bunch of them. Yeah, there's a and, whole gaggle of them, and and they all coach, or some of them coach. Yeah, I don't know which one this is. <laughs> this is this is the one that used to coach the Flames, and then he is this the one that won the Stanley Cups with the Kings? Yes. This and then like, this seems that so he's the good one. He's he's a good one, sure. And then he got fired from that job, and now he's back with the Flames. He didn't even he hasn't even been coaching lately, has he? No, I think he's just been hanging out down at the family ranch, which I I believe was his intent. I don't think he ever f- was planning to get back. Into listen, coaching. listen to this. Okay, I'm on his Wikipedia page on June twentieth, twenty eighteen. Sutter announced his retirement from coaching and returned to life as a full-time rancher. There you go. This is almost three years ago. Yeah. I guess uh, retirement wasn't all it was cut out to be out on the ranch. And it's been a, a cold winter. There's no time to get better to get off the ranch than now. So can you tell me, because he's mostly been out on the West Coast, what... What what kind of coach is this guy? Like, what kind of what is he going to do with this Flames team? So here's what he's going to do with this Flames team. He is going to play. Uh, he's going to play Brian Burke style hockey. He's going to play hard. He is going to make it difficult to play against. He is going to play slow hockey. It is not going to be super entertaining. And it was not last night, if you happen to tune into the Flames-Senators game. 
Um, so that's, I mean, that's the biggest thing that stands out to me is just like his style of play is not one that's one suited to this roster. And if you're bringing in a coach, I mean, he's not even, he's not even like an interim coach. He's just taking over. Yeah. Um, it seems like you would want to sign one that can take them in the direction you're hoping that the style of this team is. And it, he does not have the guys on this team to play Daryl Sutter style hockey. I mean, he's got Milan Lucic. Sounds like it's going to lend itself well to uh, to Milan Lucic. Oh, Lucic probably celebrated real hard that night. <laughs> big minutes, big minutes under Sutter. Yeah, I mean, I think like I think of him. I think that I think another guy that this will do well for is Sam Bennett. I think he'll get a a chance to really be able to show himself. I don't think that. It's something that like Johnny Goudreau is going to be super pumped about, though. It's a weird move for a team like the Flames to make. I mean, they're not performing as well as they probably should be in this division. No. But like, what? Why not? Like, what is going on with this roster? How are these guys not figuring it out? Yeah, I mean, and and that's part of it, right? You bring in like a harder lined coach to hopefully, in theory, fix that for the team. But I'm just, I'm not, I'm not sold that that's the move that they should have made was to bring him in. I don't like with the way that the NHL is going in the style of play and things like that. It continually becomes faster and faster and faster. And even when you think back to those Kings teams that won the Stanley Cup, those were not like high skill based high scoring teams those were like fundamentals play the system teams and i mean it, it that definitely takes skill but it was not was not the high end talent leading that team i mean it's not how you're going to beat teams like toronto and and edmonton right now well you you need to hope that you can play a better style to shut them down than they can to play your style. You need to really be able to dictate play. And in the middle of this season with jam-packed schedules where there's less days for practice, there's less days to like spend a day in the video room because you can't, it seems very difficult for you to be putting in a new system. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. It is interesting to me that you know, the, the coaching dominoes have started to fall and the first two have been up in the North division. One thing that is interesting. And I kind of thought of this after our conversation last week. And I know, I mean, Montreal has a tendency to, uh, hire French coaches. And then this week with the flames also just recycling people. One thought that went through my head was the quarantine factor that you need to be able to get Like you can't have the coach sit for two weeks and then join the team. You can't, you can't tell the head coach you're fired. Here's your two weeks notice, right? You need someone to it. So are you going to bring someone across the border to have them quarantine and then join the team in two weeks? Or if you're making that change, it's got to be now. So I think that's partially why you might see this, but uh, flames making a long-term move in that regard should not be making it solely based on the fact that he's three hours down the road. So, okay. So he is in Alberta. Yeah. His farm is in. That's where the ranch is. Viking, Alberta. Yeah. Okay. 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 So they get to avoid that whole quarantine thing. Correct. Yeah. I don't know. Weird moves all around. Weird move for him to just randomly come out of retirement. Weird move for the flames. I don't know. Now he played back in the day too in the NHL. Really? He had he had a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight year NHL career. Can you tell me what team he played for one single team his entire career? Can you tell really? me what team he played for? Oh boy. I am going to guess. I mean, it was probably it was it wasn't a new team. I want to say Chicago. Wow. How did you know that? I just guessed. Good guess, Carl. I'm really Thanks. impressed at your guessing skills. And I, I just thought of like, what's a team that's been around a long time? 
There you go. He was a left winger for the Chicago Blackhawks in the eighties. That's also probably why we we don't hear a lot about eighties Blackhawks teams. No, we don't. So that might, (laughs) that might be part of it. There we go. Um, Other news of the week, Tom Wilson uh, of the Washington Capitals was gifted a seven game suspension from the NHL for his boarding against the Boston Bruins on the weekend, a series of games that like led to many, many potential penalties and punishments. But this was the one that was warranted of the suspension. 100%. That was an awful hit. Just awful. There had to be supplemental discipline on that. There absolutely had to. Just awful. But the whole, like, it seemed like the conflict lasted the entire game. Guys were going after him. He had to fight. Uh, I can't remember who he fought, but he had to fight. He was being chirped in the penalty box after Bergeron scored the goal. Brad Marchand was spewing fire in his intermission interview. When you force people to take the side of Brad Marchand, you have made some serious mistakes in your life. Seriously. When that's when that's the side that the mass vast majority of the hockey community is taking. Well done. Yeah. But you know what? I hate to say it, but Brad Marchand was <clears throat> I can't do it, Carl. I can't say it. Okay, here you Start the sentence and I'll finish it for you. Okay, thank you. Brad Marchand was right. So, um, with the with the suspension, do you think se- seven games was an appropriate length? Honestly, I- for someone like Tom Wilson, I thought it should probably be more for that type of hit that sends somebody to the hospital. So here's the thing: he was actually. It's been shockingly long enough that he was not necessarily needed to be deemed a repeat offender. I know, which was garbage. Like, I don't know what the, what is the amount of time that passes that you, that you start over? I think it's a year. A year, like one season. And all of a sudden you're not a repeat offender. Yeah. Look at this guy's career. It's unbelievable. I was actually, I was impressed that they did seven games for him. If you were to look at it, I know that they try to do this for the playoffs. I don't I don't know fully if this was taken into account, but on an 82 game schedule equivalent, this was a 10 game suspension. And so him missing like an eighth of the season is at at a minimum should be what this is for a, for a hit like that from a guy who has repeatedly shown to have zero remorse and change none. I just, I can't imagine being that guy's teammate and having to defend him after something like that. No. So seven games, you're right. It was more than I thought they would give him. It's not as much as I thought he deserved, but I don't know. He got something. I mean, the fact of the, like we saw multiple times the NHL do nothing for other incidents this week that should have warranted a suspension, right? I mean, we saw the Brett Pesci incident against the Red Wings. Yeah, the slew foot. Do you think that should have been a suspension? Probably a couple games. It was very dangerous. Because it was a $5,000 fine. Yeah. Which is the max, is it not? That is the maximum amount for that penalty is $5,000. And he was penalized in game for it, which I think they take into consideration. Yeah. Was he, was he kicked out of the game for that? No, it was a two minute minor. I think they called him on a trip. Yeah. That's not, that's not enough. No. (laughs) Like here's $5,000 and sit for two. Yeah. No, that's a, I mean, you cannot be doing that. That was reckless and could have very easily left him badly injured. And it was intentional too. It's not like it was an accident that they didn't see each other coming or like he totally meant to do it. Yeah. What did he regret it after? Probably, but he did it. 
Yeah, but the, that's the whole thing of when you act out of emotion, you calm down, you might regret it. But the whole point is to not act like that out of emotion. You bet. What I mean, and then we had in the same series, we had Ovechkin uh, also against the Bruins. Can a guy with a stick. Yeah, that also, looked painful. Also got a $5,000 fine. And that one, I mean, the Tom Wilson one, he ended up getting his punishment, but that one upset me. The Ovechkin one? The Ovechkin one. Did, was he penalized in game for that? I uh, yes, but here's the other like just the way that I mean, people complain all the time that the NHL doesn't give superstar treatment to people, but we sat around. We, I did not, but the internet in general and fans around the NHL sat around and laughed at Ovechkin doing that and said, "Man, what a guy!" Like this. He doesn't take nothing from anyone and sat around and laughed at if that was if that was Tom Wilson doing that, it would be an entirely different story. They'd be calling for suspensions. They'd be calling for all sorts of things. Instead, Ovechkin does the same thing and gets glamorized for it. So that's a really good point. It's a really good point. So they're getting the star treatment, not just from the league and. uh, They're also getting it from the fans. Right. They, I mean, you yeah. want, you want, right. you want them to be able to play their game and not get suspended. I mean, they get it just in a different way than you want them to. So do you think he should have been suspended for that? Absolutely. Yeah. You can't just can a guy unexpectedly that is intentional and hurts and is the most, I mean, it's easy. Unsportsmanlike. They called it a spear. That wasn't a spear. Mm, no, not quite. Look, if you speared someone in that area, I think we would all know what it looked like. <laughs> my wife, when we watched it, my wife was just nonchalant. She's like, that looks like it hurts. <laughs> Made me cringe a little bit. Yeah. Speaking of which, I saw that I found this out during football season. Did you know football players don't wear cups anymore? What? Yeah. Why? It gets in the way. what <laughs> movement it like it's hard to run fast run yeah surely someone can optimize the cup for better running they just don't bother because here's the other so part of it is that like so you see whenever almost every time someone gets hit there they will like limp off the field or like take a while because part of the other logic is that the like the crown of the helmet even if you were to get hit there or shoulder pads most of the equipment is larger than like that area would be when when if you're standing there as a quarterback or something like that so like it's actually protects just by the shape of the equipment i don't know man so most (laughs) is that most or all most most like there was so they interviewed them. There was like a segment on Fox pregame about this, <laughs> and yeah, they do not wear a cup. And as a hockey player, you would never not wear a cup. You no. show up to beer league without a cup, and you're watching in the stands. Yeah, no. I one guy once went out and played, and I was like, dude, you're a brave man. Like I played without pants once but I would not play without a cup. No, play without elbow pads, fine. (laughs) But you're not going to play without a cup. Yeah, shin pads, a little different. Especially in beer league with the the way the sticks fly in that. (laughs) Yeah, but no, a cup, you're wearing that. Yes, yes. Anyways, interesting fact. There's your cup fact of the day. Can't wait for tomorrow's. Uh, I mean... I've got I've got one of those desk calendars, so <laughs> I'll just I'll just send you a picture of what I've got tomorrow. Great. All right. Well, there. You, so Tom Wilson does get suspended. Ovechkin doesn't, and um, NFL players don't wear cups. Canada in the playoffs. So they've they fired. Interestingly, Canada, the only market, the North Division, the only one that has fired coaches yet. And none of them somehow are Travis green after literally us talking. That was the first person on the chopping block this year. Travis green still has a job. Is he next? I mean, he has to be, does he not? 
I just think it would be hilarious if all the coaches fired this year are from the North Division. Well, and here's the thing. Like, if they fire him, I don't see Paul Maurice necessarily getting fired with the Jets because they could blame that roster on it. Um, But, like, three of those teams are playoff contention, and it's very possible that two of those are going to make the playoffs. Yeah. And if that's the case, I mean, depending on how things sort out, if one of them goes on a heater, they could end up with one of them in the second round. It's gonna. It's so tight this year, and it's so surprising to me that teams are willing to make these kind of instinct, like gut decisions, on this anomaly of a season when you've literally only played six teams for yeah. the North Division. Like you've you've played only other teams, and that division is very bad compared to the rest of them. Yeah, it's very nearsighted to me. And I, I don't understand why they're not looking at this with with a longer term focus. Yeah. You have to think like going into this year, that coach had to be on the hot seat. Yeah, you would think so. Otherwise, which I mean, they did like Jeff Ward was an interim head coach last year and they brought him back. Like that guy did not even last a full season as the head coach. Yeah, but they probably thought it's not fair to make a decision on him on this anomaly of a season last year. Right. So they were like, let's bring him back. And then they saw some more and we're like, we actually, not. Nah. <laughs> we, we still don't see like what we see. Did he still have the intermittent in front of his title? No, I, I believe that they took the interim off uh, when this Inter- season started. Interim, not intermittent. <laughs> Every once in a while, he showed up to coach the team. I mean, it's that that was the flames. They had an intermittent uh, label in front of their name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so we've got that, but an interesting thing came out this week, looking at uh, what is going to happen with Canadian teams come playoff time. What do you got for us over there? Well, they, uh, when they get to the final four, they may not be playing in Canada. So, uh, you know, the first round is going to happen within the division. And then by the time they get to, well, I guess they're thinking it's going to be June. Uh, they're going to have to have the divisions playing against each other. And, you know, the borders probably still going to be an issue at that point and crossing back and forth. And what are the quarantine regulations going to be? So uh, the latest this week was that they might look to move one of the Canadian teams down south of the border to play out of out of an arena down there that's not being used during the playoffs. Isn't it wild though that like by that time with the trends the way that it's going, if the border is still closed, it will then have changed and be because America does not want Canada spreading COVID into their country. It's crazy, man. I also saw this week that uh some players, some NHL players have started to get vaccinated. Yeah, and I'm not sure how they I mean some states have done a ton of vaccinating and done a really good job. And some of these guys do have pre-existing conditions that put them in a high risk group. So yeah, I mean, good on them for being able to, and for doing what they need to stay safe. Yeah. So it's, it's happening down there. It's happening fast down there. And uh, it wouldn't surprise me come June to see Toronto playing out of Buffalo or Winnipeg playing out of Minnesota or Edmonton playing out of Arizona. Those were the three uh, options Pierre LeBron gave. (laughs) I mean, I'm, I'm glad that he's also said, you know what, Minnesota, you've had a good run, but (laughs) you're not getting past Vegas. We, we all know the truth. (laughs) (laughs) That's good. I mean, it makes sense. Um, And I don't think that even come, playoff time like I, I still think that teams will be playing in their home arenas especially south of the border like uh with more and more states allowing people into games and and welcoming them in uh playoffs is going to be a time where you want that home ticket revenue and you want to be able to bring that in so even for a canadian team to be like look can we go down there and have some fans why not right i think they should shuffle all the teams like like have Tampa play out of Buffalo, Boston play out of Tampa, and Toronto play out of Boston. <laughs> like if the north if the north 
division doesn't get a home ice advantage. Neither do you. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, Just right. shuffle them all. Yeah. Okay. I can get behind that. But what's right. it? I mean, I think I think Arizona is a great location idea because like half of Arizona at that point in time is Canadians, anyways. So <laughs> like I'll be able to go watch their home team. Exactly. So you can you can head over there and uh, watch that. I'm not I'm not sure though that Arizona is used to having ice made in that arena in J- June. So maybe go play in a colder climate than yeah, probably June, a good idea. June in Phoenix, so um, not the best. So what about Seattle? The West should use Seattle. Test. I mean, is that arena going to be ready by then? If it is, wow. I mean, it was supposed to be ready by October 2021, wasn't it? I mean, October and June are a little different. <laughs> Do people not like aim to finish things early anymore? No. I mean, right I'm down to the even, wire all the time, eh? I'm, it's cheaper that way. But I, I would love that. That would be a great idea. If that arena is ready, call him up. Get uh, what Luicki? Get him on the phone and yeah. say, "Hey, we got a plan. You're hosting the North Division in the playoffs." What a better way to get that arena going, right? Let's test your ice with Connor McDavid. Could you imagine? Shows up and it's like Lake Placid out there or Lake Tahoe out there for a playoff game. That'd be rough. Yeah, that would be rough. Right, I just well, like how I've already made my assumptions of which Canadian teams are going to be moving down. <laughs> I, I know. If everyone goes back, Nick's just made his final four prediction without actually telling us his final four. So it's nice. Yeah, pretty much. We've got what you said: Tampa, Edmonton, yeah, Vegas. I don't think you picked an East division. Uh, Tampa, Toronto. Uh, Toronto. Oh you no, can't have, you can't have Edmonton and Toronto. Yeah, that see is, now, now I'm confused. <laughs> it's the most Toronto thing. Like I know Edmonton's <laughs> going to make it, but also we'd like to be there too. Toronto has to go. How is the league going to make their bottom line this year if Toronto doesn't play in the playoffs? Look, when when Toronto gets some some garbage officiating calls, you know that that's what the reason is going to be. <laughs> you know that, Nick. Especially when they sign up to play in Buffalo. Would be the that most... would be such a troll job. Especially, look, can they... How would Buffalo fans react if they had a Stanley cup raised on their ice and the home team was the Toronto Maple Leafs, man. I'd be, if I was a Buffalo fan, I'd be pissed if the Leafs were playing home game playoff games in that arena. They're in the home dressing room, just like sitting in coach oh. Jack Eichel's office. <laughs> yeah. You got Matthew sitting in coach Jack Eichel's office. You got Thornton sitting in GM Jack Eichel's office. You got, Who's the captain? Tavares sitting in Captain Jack Eichel's office. It's wild. It's the same office. There's just three desks and <laughs> just in the middle of the lock of the locker room. <laughs> he calls himself from one desk to the other. He calls guys into meetings and just switches chairs depending <laughs> on which one he's going to. <laughs> he just has a clip on tie. He'll just take off if he has to. Yeah. Very. I mean, at least he's professional about it. Yeah, hundred percent. He's Jack Eichel. He is having meetings that should be closed door right in the middle of the dressing room. But hey, that's fine. If there's one thing we know about Jack Eichel, it's that he's the epitome of professional. <laughs> and he doesn't air dirty laundry ever. No, of course not. But no, that'll be good. The draft lottery. Uh, we talked a few weeks ago about some of those changes that could be coming for the draft lottery. And some more news around that came out today. Let me know. Let's let's do this kind of one by one. There's three things that they're looking at changing. The NHL has proposed these, and so it went out today to teams, and then the Board of Governors needs to approve it. So here's rule change number one. Teams are limited to no more than two lottery wins in a five-year period. Good. That's probably how it should be. Yeah. So how, like, if your team is bad, like, let's say you, the Detroit Red Wings, had won the lottery last year. Yeah. You win the lottery this year. Yeah. Then you're out of it. Does that seem fair to you? Yeah, because if you're... I might be jumping ahead to some of the other rules, but there's still a chance that you pick top three. Spoilers. I know, okay. I'm sorry. 
So, but they, they all affect each other. Okay. So you're okay with that. I, and I think that's fair. I mean, this is literally the New York Rangers rule. I mean, this is all 100%. the New York, this is the entire set of the New York Rangers rules, but that is, that is one of two in five years, Europe. Meanwhile, the Oilers are at the other end of the table or the Zoom call just laughing. <laughs> they don't they don't really do anything with their first round picks anyway. So it's every time they won the lottery, everyone was like, oh, okay. I guess so. I All guess. Right. Another rule, teams are only I'll skip skip ahead to this last one then. A reduction in the number of picks decided by the lottery from three to two. So that's what you alluded to of only you can still pick third. If you lose, so they'll only be picking for two spots instead of the current situation of three. Like, do you think in a classic kind of tear it down rebuild, three years of picking in the top three should be enough to kickstart, right? It better be. It should be. And then you're still picking top, probably like top five top 10 for the next few years. So you're still getting good players in the draft. They're yeah. just spreading out that elite creme de la creme. I think I just, the one that I think of, and I mean, it didn't go this way, but I think what do you do in a situation like when Ottawa or San Jose last year, where they have that like high pick that somehow got traded and they win that lottery. And now that team's not allowed to win it again. I think you'll see, I mean, I think we, we should see any, either way, those teams should have put some sort of lottery protection on that pick. Yeah. And I think we'll certainly, you have to do that if this rule goes into place. Yeah. I think, I think you're going to see a lot more lottery protected picks in all the trades now, but like if, if Ottawa trades their first round pick to San Jose and the lottery falls where Ottawa's first round pick bumps up to first San Jose should just get that pick that shouldn't count against San Jose's two first round draft picks oh no I think I mean if you get that pick that doesn't count against you but who does that does that count against the team that gave the pick away then or does it oh that's a good point (laughs) that was that was my thought right like because Ottawa gave that Bowen Byron pick to the Avalanche yeah and then if the Avalanche had to finished in that in the lottery does that count against Ottawa or does that count against Colorado yeah that's a good point it shouldn't count against Colorado, in my opinion. Certainly not. No. But I don't know if it should count against Ottawa either. That kind of seems... I think it should. I think it should. If you're dumb enough or bold enough to trade a lottery pick, especially if there's only two, if you trade a top two overall draft pick, come on. You deserve it. Yeah. Yeah, you convinced me. I agree. Excellent. Max Chaos. Lottery protect your picks. That's that's the lesson, right? That's that's the rule here. Yes. All right. Last up is the rule that you can only move up a maximum of ten spots in the draft lottery. Sure. That's just to make sure that a middle middle ranked team can't get the first round pick, right? Yeah. Which literally the NHL decided what four months ago that those teams that one in the playoffs like a taught like the penguins they were like that team's deserving of the first overall pick or the leafs they intentionally chose to put them in and then realized what they've done now and said we're now going to punish everyone else for our stupid decision three months ago yeah they did do that is that surprising to you <laughs> like this is the nhl i i i expect better carl you saw Gary's dining room table. Only one <laughs> corner of it. I don't know what that has to do with this at all. Well, I mean, that's where this was written up. <laughs> yeah. He drafted this at that dining room table. <laughs> On his napkin. <laughs> On the back of a dirty napkin. <laughs> um, no, I don't know. I'm, I'm fine. I'm very like... All of these things make sense to me. I'm not super passionate about it. Like if, if they decided to do none of these things, I'd still be like, okay, whatever. I think that there's a better way to do the top 10. Like just make it only the top 10 are eligible. The rest of you don't even get a chance. Yeah, why wouldn't they do that? That seems, if you don't want someone moving up 10 spots, don't let them in. Yeah. That makes way more sense to me. 
That seems easy. And then you're making sure that only like the really bad teams are moving up. Or here's an idea. So you take the draft lottery and you throw it in the garbage and you just pick based off of standings. That's fine. I mean, I think they should get rid of the draft lottery too. And I'm totally fine with them just picking based off of standings. Uh, Especially this year, right? They should start that this year. But isn't the whole thing that they don't want to encourage teams to tank? But this isn't an issue in other sports. Football doesn't have this issue where like there people are clamoring for a draft lottery. Baseball doesn't have people clamoring for a draft lottery. Not that baseball is like amateur yeah. draft and their system's that great, but yeah. I don't I don't know. I don't know what the right decision. Well, I know what the right decision is. Create a draft, a first overall pick tournament and make the teams play for it. Yes. That's However, the right answer. However, we're not getting that. So Yeah, it's too contentious for the NHL. You could put that in Buffalo. Sure. That way the home crowd will get to see their team every year. Did you see? So we're gonna we're gonna move on to the elimination station here in a second. But did you see this news uh this week of what the Vegas Golden Knights had to experience speaking of being in places when they were in San Jose? No. So team they're staying at the hotel, right? They got a game in San Jose that night. <gasps> I and... did hear about this. Go on, tell us. And they go for breakfast, come back, and are informed that the hotel foreclosed and they have to get out. Unreal. How does this happen to a professional sports team that travels as much as they do? You think somebody who's booking these rooms would know something about this hotel? I, I mean, I love the fact that that hotel still did breakfast that morning. <laughs> like, <laughs> we're closing at noon, but yeah, I mean, these eggs are just going to go bad. We might as well cook them. <laughs> Fantastic. What a great story. So I guess they had to go find another hotel. They, yeah, they had to pack up their stuff and early and in the middle, in the middle of a road trip, switch hotels. So, man, that's too funny. That's uh, I mean, you don't get that when you have a bubble. This is what that you asked for. No bubble players, you get no bubble. <laughs> it's like the complete opposite. <laughs> Could you imagine if that had happened to, during the bubble? All of a sudden, that hotel's <laughs> like, "Sorry, we're closing the doors." You you can't do that. We've got like three hundred people here. Sorry, it's not worth it. Imagine after just. Like, think about how much money those hotels made off the NHL. Oh, those hotels made a killing. It's the only it's the only reason anyone's traveling right now. Yep, that's I was, true. I was I was speaking of hotels. I I was also given a, uh, a a discount rate at a chain of hotels today as a thank you to people in the profession. I'm like, interesting. I, are we traveling? Is that a, is that what we're doing? <laughs> I didn't know that we were traveling. That's why they give you the discount rate because they know that uh, redemption will be low. Yeah, no one no one is using that. But hey, thank you. <laughs> it's the thought that counts. It's a nice gesture. Yeah, absolutely. All right, we'll be back on the other side with the elimination station. Three, two, one. Welcome back to the Elimination Station, where apparently I say enough every week that Nick can just mime along with me when I come back from a segment. Well, when we came back in from break, you counted down three, two, one. So I thought we were reversing roles for a minute. Oh, so I talked over you. We could have done that. Do you want to do take two? Let's do take two. Three, two, one. Welcome back to the fourth line podcast we it's time carl it's time for this week's elimination station all right let's do it no you have to take it from here i uh, (laughs) i can't lead us through the whole thing (laughs) so do you know what the elimination station is 
I've heard of it. Okay. Of course I know what it is. We're going to eliminate a team from the playoffs this year. We are going to. Do you want to let people know who we eliminated last week? I do. And I will remind people that we are snaking these picks. Uh, We started with the North, the Ottawa Senators, and then we went to the Central and eliminated the Detroit Red Wings. And then out West, we eliminated the Los Angeles Kings. And we crossed the country and went East, eliminated the New Jersey Devils, and then the Buffalo Sabres, and then the Anaheim Ducks. And we're back in the Central, Carl, for this week's Elimination Station. This is a hard one. It is, but I think I'm pretty sure of who I want to eliminate. Interesting. All right. I'll let you go first, and I'll tell you if it's the same. And here, just so you can know, I have that team pulled up on my phone. Do you have a team? I have a team. Okay, so if I count to three, should we say the name of the team at the same time and see if it's the same? Are we saying it on three or after three? Well, how can I say three and the name of the team at the same time? So... One, two, three, or three, two, one. I'm going to say three, two, one, and then we say the name of the team. Okay. 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 Three, two, one. Natural Natural Predators. Predators. Yes. There we go. That was exciting. (laughs) Welcome to the Elimination Station, Nashville. Not entirely what I thought would be happening that the Predators are eliminated before the Blackhawks. No, but look at Chicago's winning percentage. Oh, it's, it's hard to eliminate them right now. Oh, there's no way that I was. I mean, earlier this year, I tried to, and we yeah. didn't. And I'm grateful for that. Yeah. And like, you know why Nashville was so easy for me? Because they decided to eliminate themselves two weeks ago. Exactly. <laughs> they're like no you know what this season's over for us everyone's on the table send us your trade requests yeah so and i mean they've lost now four in a row oh. they, they did get a point against dallas but this nashville team in a central division where no one's played games like everyone's had some significant time missed they have played a f- fairly large amount they played 25 games the leader in the division is 26 with chicago uh, detroit and columbus and yet they still only have 22 points they're 11 and 14 it's not good no it's not good and you know they don't have they're in they're in a good spot there but Sorry, when you, I you cut out there, do you want to? Oh, did I cut out? Like literally, you looked at your phone and you froze on my screen, and it was like, must be a really important message there. I'm just watching my modem. Okay, seems to be okay. Okay. <clears throat> what was the last thing I said? <laughs> mm, I don't know. Just restart the thought. I'd said okay. something about them being 11 or 14. Okay. The, the the good thing for Nashville is that they don't have a salary cap problem. Like they have a lot of flexibility with what they can do with their roster. Absolutely. Now, when I look at this roster, what kind of stands out to me, and I don't know how they got to be this way. There is a serious lack of depth in forwards here. Which they used to have a ton of. They used, they used- to have a ton of. Yeah. Where did it go? I mean, I think after some time you you just can't have that depth, but I mean, I look at this team and I look at some of those pieces around them and they still have a good top 6. Like I still like what they've got there. Sure. Not as sold and their defense is fantastic. Yeah. Not agreed. as good as it once was. Right? But certainly still good. Goaltending is an issue. <laughs> goaltending is an issue. Are you ready to talk about the goaltending in Nashville? Sure, let's do it. Are you ready to walk back some of the previous statements you've made on the goaltending in Nashville? Yeah, I will. I mean, you 
I believe, now correct me if I'm wrong, you talked me back onto the Soros bandwagon at the start of the year. Did you not? I did. I was yeah. ready. I was ready. I, I had two feet off and I was just dangling them over the edge and I was ready to jump. I did. I, I talked you back on. I was not ready to give up on this team. Not at the beginning of the year. Now are you? Yes. Now I am. And you know what really has made a huge difference for me is the, the fact that they've given up on themselves. Right. The, I mean, if if what they said of like, send us your trades, everyone's on the block is true, you have to be done with this team for this yeah. year. Yes. Yeah. So if you're not going to believe in yourself, I'm not going to believe in you. And their record has reflected that. Yeah. Well, and I like right now, Looking at and I'm not I'm not sure the length that these guys are out, but right now you got Ryan Ellis is out with it yeah. on on IR and Matt Duchesne's on IR and the aforementioned formerly fantastic UC Saros is on IR. Yeah. So like you've got some of those pieces there that doesn't set you up well when you've got some some solid pieces gone. It hurts. It hurts in a in a shortened season like this, for sure. Yeah. You can't have so uh, I don't know, but like even like Ryan Ellis hurts for sure. But like Matt Duchesne's not had a great showing in Nashville. Uh, and, you know, we talked about Saros. All of their goaltending has just been kind of below average, not as bad as it could be, but certainly not where it needs to be. Well, and what would you give if you had to give a percentage chance of them making the playoffs next year? What would you put that at? Next year, a percentage chance, man, I don't know. I'm just looking at, at their contract situation. Who's going to be around? Who's not? I don't know. 40% do the divisions go back to normal. I'm assuming they travel. I assume that they do. I assume I was going to say 40, 45% yeah. for them next year. I think that they'll be a fringe playoff team. I think that they'll get some pieces back in. And I think that they, I mean, they need to. They're not bad enough that they can go full rebuild right now. Because they're not going to get a high enough pick, I don't think. I think they'll still be able to hold out enough that they'll finish ahead of some of these other teams. But Yeah. I... I don't know. They're not drafting very high right now, so it's not like <laughs> they can right. rely on that either. Like if, if if it ends right now, and assuming Dallas moves ahead of them, they would be picking seventh overall. So they'll get a good prospect, but not one that's coming in next year. No. Probably one that's another year out, especially with the way that junior development's been the last few years. So, yeah. I don't know. They're not, they're not in the best position. I mean, they could still make some moves and some tweaks to stay competitive. They don't need to make massive sweeping changes. They could make a few tweaks that would keep them in the, in the playoff conversation next year, yep. but they're on their way down. They're on the other side of it. Yes. And I think, I mean, they can try to extend this as long as possible by some free agent signings, trade some guys out, get some more. But I think that, the sooner that they realize that this era is done and they need to do a rebuild, the better in the long term. Yeah. Agreed. All right. Let's take a look at the Knicks Lidstrom. Let's think back to last week, a week that I choose to forget as much about as possible. Cause our Knicks Lidstrom last week was the Colorado avalanche. It wasn't a terrible record that they posted. It wasn't good. It was it certainly looked like a roller coaster though. <laughs> like like let's just run through these scores quickly. Last Monday, March 1st, they lost 6 to 2 to San Jose. That's bad. A few mm-hmm. days later, they won 4 nothing against San Jose. That's yeah. good. The next night, they won against Anaheim 3 to 2 in overtime. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. And the night after that, they lost five to four in overtime against Anaheim. So they get out of four games last week, they came away with five of a possible eight points. Yeah. Which is fine. Not good, but fine. 
I think it's a, it's it's closer to bad because of the teams that they're giving these points up to. Correct. Right? Like they should be beating the Sharks and the Ducks cleanly. Yeah. Um, but can you tell me about Nathan McKinnon and how he's doing? Um, I imagine you were all fired up about that. His injury situation, you mean? Yeah. He got he got hit, didn't he? Yeah. And the fact, I mean, so he was supposed to be back out this week, uh, actually on Saturday's game. He was he was supposed to be a a go for that game and was a last second game time scratch for that. Um, so after being said that he would be there, he was out on Friday night. So a little unexpected there, but I would think that we should have him back soon. If if he was a game time decision and was a late scratch on Friday, I would think their next game, which is. In fact, I believe it's tonight. Yeah, tonight against the Coyotes. Uh, they are, I mean, it has to be tonight because they are a team that does not have two days off the rest of the season. So they have to be playing tonight because they didn't play yesterday. But I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to get him back. That'll be good. That's crazy. They don't have two nights off for the rest of the season? Correct. Man, I'm so tired just thinking about that. <laughs> at, at the very least a lot of those games are going to be like in the same city. So you're not traveling like a road trip is not traveling Fair. every single day. So that's nice. Fair. But I mean, so this is a team. Let me list off to you the players that were out for that last game. So we had Nathan McKinnon, JT Comfer, who literally would be the person who previously in the year took McKinnon's spot on that top line when he was out. So he was gone. Uh, Connor Timmons, defender out. Uh, he's been one who has slotted in as a replacement guy, um, been like a six, six, seven D on this team. But it's important that he was out because Eric Johnson, Bowen Byram, and Kale McCarr all also out, as well as backup goaltender Pavel Franco. Which, when you are playing with no extra days off, you are going to be using your backup goaltender. So Hunter Minska uh, actually got into some of those games. A terrible injury situation right now for the Avalanche. Yeah, that's really not good. Although better now than than later, <laughs> closer to the playoffs. I mean, yes, you want that. Eric Johnson is going to end up on IR every year, no matter what you do. And they need to find a way to make sure that he ends up in Seattle. That's what they need to find a way to do. I'm sure they might. But I mean, with with what was there, this was a team that looked very lost this week against Anaheim uh, against on Monday against San Jose, both games against Anaheim. They had leads. They blew leads. This team cannot come back at all. They just get, I mean, they're not like Calgary flames level defeated. You watch those flames games and they just are sat on the bench all the time, but it's not great for the avalanche right now. They they're struggling in a lot of ways and Luckily, they still have some time to figure it out. But this is also like the majority of this team was here last year as well. You shouldn't be needing to figure this out. And I am definitely concerned. Really? Like, are you concerned about getting to the playoffs? Or are you concerned about what's going to happen once you're in there? No. I mean, because of what we have in this division, like with those guys that we had, with half of our defense out, with two centers out we were able to get five out of eight points against some pretty bad teams and so with those teams being in the division with la coming back to reality at some point here um i do think actually i've watched a shockingly large amount of minnesota hockey and i just really think that kaprizov guy man he he's the real deal it's looking good eh yeah so i I, i'm I'm not as much thinking that Minnesota will come as far back down. So I think it will be Colorado, St. Louis, Vegas, and Minnesota in those playoffs. I think that I think Colorado can beat LA into these playoffs. I'm not that concerned, but it is concerning. Like, can they win a round in the playoffs when you can't come back, when you get down and cannot win a game that you're not going to win a playoff round. Nope. No, you're not. And this is the Stanley Cup favorite. 
Not for me anymore. It never was for you. <laughs> it never was. I, I had high hopes, though. But no. now I don't. No. <laughs> well, that's Colorado. That is Colorado. I'm so, sorry. I'm sorry you had to endure that uh, last week. Here, I, on, on my side of this, I'm like, man, they actually did pretty good. Five out of eight points. <laughs> Do you, now now you know why I disagreed with you. Yeah, now I know why. Thank you for that uh that uh, dose of reality. All right. What do you want this week? Where's your Knicks Lidstrom taking us this week? Who are you locking into the playoffs? I, I'm looking at a couple teams. Um but I have a bit of a problem in that I don't remember teams we've put in in the past. Okay, here are the teams that we have put in. Toronto, Philly, Dallas, Tampa, Vegas, Colorado. So we only have one team in the East and one team in the North. We should do, uh, I don't really want to touch the North division, so we should do an East division. <laughs> and I, I mean, if we're looking East, there's there's some definite teams that are that seem to be locks in that one. Do you? What are you thinking for there? Who was the first team I put in in the East? Philadelphia? Philadelphia, the team that's currently in fifth. Oh, you know who we should watch this week? And I say this solely because I saw one highlight of Matt Barzell scoring an incredible goal. Oh my goodness. What a goal. Holy. We're watching the Islanders this week. We okay. got to go watch Matt Barzell. Here was, you know where I thought you were going to go? And if this changes your mind, I'm not trying to persuade you. But if we watch the Washington Capitals this week, we do not have to watch Tom Wilson. That's a good point. That's a really good point. <laughs> well, let's uh, let's look at the slate of games here. Yeah, let's watch the Capitals. <laughs> okay, because we're gonna have the to... Sabers and Devils. Because <laughs> if we watch the Islanders, we have to watch the Bruins, and we you know how we like to avoid watching the Bruins. No, the Capitals are playing the Bruins. The Capitals are playing the Devils. What's the date this week? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're right. They just played them. Okay. So Devils, Flyers. Devils on Tuesday, Flyers Thursday, Saturday. And then we'll then maybe we'll play a little Sabres on Monday. So there we go. We got three games for the Caps this week. There you go. Welcome to the playoffs, Washington. With Tom Wilson. What you can do is we'll be watching the Tom Wilson list Washington Capitals play. We'll be back to you next week. We'll give you some of our thoughts on their team. And you can head over to Twitter and at fourth line podcast with the number four and pick the over under for every game. We'll tell you what it is. I bet for tomorrow's game, the over under would probably be five and a half because every game is five and a half. (laughs) It's a safe, you know, it's a safe guess. Yeah. They haven't released the, the line for that game, but we'll be, we'll be, we'll be tuning in and seeing what that is. Um, so head on over there, pick that. And we were supposed to have them on this week, but something came up for them. Uh, so our, we'll have, hopefully have them on next week where we'll be unveiling our new prizes for high sticking and we'll hand some out next week. So So exciting. We'll do that. You can find more about the show at fourth line podcast. No, not the fourth line podcast.com. That's what our (laughs) website is. Twitter is at fourth line podcast. The website, the fourth line podcast.com. I think I think it's time for us to wrap up this show. I think so too, Carl. <laughs> you can find us on iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, the Full Press Radio app, wherever you listen to podcasts, subscribe, and we'll be there for you every Monday night. We'll be coming out, or you know, depending on which which coast you're on or which country, maybe we're waiting for you Tuesday morning. So head on over there, tune in. Thank you very much for listening. And until next week. It's time for us to wrap up another fourth line show. I know what you're thinking. You don't want us to go. The NFL players who don't wear a cup should avoid a Vetchkin if they want to spare their pup. 